Hi, everybody, and welcome to HashiConf Digital 2020. And thank you for joining my session titled HashiCorp Vault Zero to Hero. Super happy to be here this year. Uh, definitely a different, different situation as compared to last year when I was presenting on stage, and now I get to come to you live from my office. So uh, hopefully you enjoy the session. So again, my name is Brian Krausen. Uh, I'm a principal consultant, and I've been working with Vault for probably three and a half to four years now. So, and I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of Fortune 100, uh, Fortune 1000 companies uh, designing and implementing Vault. And so I'm super excited to be able to bring you this presentation and bring you my experience with working with Vault with other customers. So let's start off with Vault. Um, so Vault is, you know, can be somewhat complex when you first uh, start integrating or start learning it, right? So when you start looking, looking at Vault, you, to worry about things like authentication methods, secret engines, right? How to unseal vaults, all those kind of things. And honestly, they can be a little daunting when you first actually look at vault and, you know, when you're trying to deploy in your organization. However, it's actually not that bad once you finally understand all the different components and how they're all put together. So really, the goal of this presentation is how to walk you from, you know, going from vault zero knowledge all the way to becoming kind of the hero in your organization by deploying vaults and getting them up and running. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is how to operationalize vault. Right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to be able to build the right team for your organization. I've seen customers in the past where, you know, maybe it's one person, two people that actually get up to speed on vault and they're the ones who want to run vault and manage vault and start integrating with their applications. But oftentimes that one or two person uh, team isn't necessarily enough, right? And so we want to make sure we're involving different skill sets when we're building our vault team. Uh, you know, embrace other teams within the organization. Uh, if this could be the first time that you interact with these teams. Um, you know, and this is like become friends with security, right? They're not always the bad guys. Uh, so when we're building the right team, we want to think about things like the operational team, right? The operations team is going to manage vault on a day-to-day -day basis for you. Uh, we need to involve the infrastructure team because the infrastructure team may own the vault infrastructure, right? The VMs on if you're on premises or things like instances if you're running in the cloud environment. So those that team needs to fully understand the vault environment as well so they can help support it if something goes wrong. Uh, you need to obviously involve the cloud team. Now let's assume you're running on a public cloud of some sort. Um, and then obviously the security team, right? So a lot of times when I'm working with customers, I see the automation team and I see the cloud team are the ones who are actually trying to bring Vault with, to the organization. And oftentimes security is not necessarily involved and I highly discourage that because security is gonna want to uh, use Vault as well and they're gonna use Vault to you know, improve their security posture across the organization. And they're also gonna be the ones that help champion Vault to the organization. And so your project, again, th throughout the, the business, is going to help a lot of different customers, right? So from different development stack, uh, different developing teams, um, to just IT, to even you know things like HR, whoever else wants to use Vault. So once we build the right team, we wanna make sure we train that right team. And so I've worked with customers who wanted to bring Vault to their organization. Uh, they really loved the idea of the features and functionality that Vault brought to their organization, but they didn't necessarily train the team as they should have. Right? And so as a consultant, uh, they really rely, the, the one customer I'm thinking about really relied on me for doing everything within Vault. And by the time I left that customer, they really hadn't had anybody who went out and did training, right? They didn't fully understand uh, the Vault architecture, how to work with Vault, things like that. And, you know, that's just a bad situation for you. So we want to make sure that you take the train, take the team. You can use a HashiCorp partner, you know, to deliver this type of training, you can go through official HashiCorp training, or there's a lot of community-based content out there. So regardless of which one you do, you wanna make sure that you accurately change, train your team and so they understand what's going on within the Vault environment. Uh, the last thing I wanna talk about, about um, 
operationalizing Vault is, you know, you want to make sure you automate everything up front. So, you know, use things like Terraform or other infrastructure as code tools uh, to deploy your Vault and console nodes, that's assuming you're using console, um, and also configure Vault, right? And so what that does is, is not only allows you to get Vault up and running quickly, but it also allows you to deploy other clusters of Vault uh, if, if you start uh, extending Vault to other data centers or if you happen to have an outage and need to quickly deploy Vault to another region or another data center, you have that code that you're able to automate and bring Vault up uh, pretty quickly. Uh, the second thing is, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. There's tons of content out there. Uh, go search for GitHub, go look at HashiCorp's website, especially like the Learn platform, things like that. Uh, don't start from scratch, right? There's a lot of community content out there that you can use and then build upon that content uh, to automate Vault the way that you need it to be automated. Uh, the, the other thing is, you know, engage a HashiCorp partner if you're unsure about how to automate Vault, uh, automate the deployment of Vault and get it configured, right? Uh, the last thing you want to do is spend a lot of time working on automation when you could quickly hire somebody for cheap to come in and lay down that configuration, right? And they can bring that experience that they have working with other customers to your organization. So now you have a fully functional, vetted vault deployment uh, up front versus kind of doing it, you know, how you know how to do it and then slowly having to improve the environment. Uh, the last option here for automation is, you know, working with the HashiCorp implementation services team. Uh, this is not a sales pitch for the team. I don't work for HashiCorp, but you know, it's a great team that you can use to quickly run a quick start on Vault and get it up and running in your environment very quickly. So after you operationalize Vault, uh, you want to start thinking about how to integrate Vault with your applications. And so the first thing that I typically will talk to customers about is trying to centralize that identity uh, for applications you know, around Vault. And so what we can do is we can talk to our different development teams and we can say, hey, if you're ever looking for credentials, come to me, right? Come to Vault and Vault can manage credentials across all these different platforms. And then you don't have to worry about integrating uh, with these individual platforms, right? So you don't have to worry about understanding Azure Deeply or AWS or Google or Kubernetes or any of those kind of things. All you have to understand as a developer is how to interact with Vault and you let the Vault team manage everything else. So it makes it a lot easier for the developer once you get everything um, integrated, right, start integrating things, then you want to start trying to migrate some of those static secrets within your organization that you have laying around. Now, you don't have to pretend they don't exist. I know they exist on every organization. You know, I've been an administrator and I've had those service accounts that have been, uh, the password has been there for three years and it's being used for the application to connect to that database, right? So think of those types of credentials that are within your organization. And those are the things that you want to try to migrate into Vault uh, because they tend to be the easiest credentials um, to, to migrate. So if you think about things like just your regular Active Directory accounts, right, uh, database service accounts, uh, security scanning, right? If you have a vulnerability scanner uh, going out to deploy, scan everything you know, on a nightly basis or a weekly basis, right? Those type of credentials are generally privileged credentials that you really don't want to, A, have them last very long, and B, you know, obviously don't want them to fall into the wrong hands. Right, so um, you want to definitely take care of those types of credentials. Uh, you want to take care of public cloud credentials, right? And that's not only saying I need, I need to store those static credentials, but we also want to be able to uh, create those dynamically on the fly, right? And then finally, once you get all those static credentials in Vault, right, we want to update all those to dynamic credentials if possible. So once you get those static credentials in there and you have applications integrating with Vault, meaning they go to Vault and they can access a certain path for a secrets engine in Vault, right? For static secrets, it's probably going to be the KV store. Now, once they can successfully access the KV store and get those credentials, then what you can do is you can start migrating some of those applications over to dynamic credentials. So say, for example, if you have a database account that's being used to access, you know, a MySQL account somewhere either on premises or, you know, things like Amazon AWS, Right. Instead of having that credential last forever, right, 24 seven and, you know, only update that maybe once a year, what you can do is enable the database secrets engine, integrate that database secrets engine with that MySQL backend. And now you go to the application team and say, hey, instead of going to you know, KV databases, you know, whatever to get your static credential, now go to databases and in, in the role name. And what happens is Vault will generate that secret or that credential dynamically for you with a very short TTL, 
And every time that application comes to Vault to get a new uh, credential, then Vault will respond with a new credential, right, that's been rotated. So uh, think of those credentials that you have to rotate like every single year, uh, you know, to meet PCI requirements or things like that. Now, if you're integrating that with Vault, like we're rotating that like every 15 minutes or every hour, right, instead of waiting that full 365 days a year. So definitely something that you want to look at is, you know, migrating into static credentials and then finally moving those static credentials over to dynamic credentials if possible. Once you get all those credentials uh, in Vault, right, then you can start updating all your CICD tools to take advantage of Vault, right? So instead of storing secrets in each individual CICD platform like Jenkins Secrets or Ansible or things like that, right, consolidate it into Vault and then have your CICD platform reach into Vault and get those secrets. So you can also do the same thing with your CICD platform uh, with Vault that we were talking about in regards to static secrets. So move those status secrets over, have the CICD application come grab them from Vault, and eventually migrate those over to uh, dynamic credentials. And so now every time the CICD job runs, right, it's generating those dynamic credentials. Maybe they're automatically revoked at the end, or they have a very short TTL. Uh, with you know things like Jenkins, right? You can install a plugin with Jenkins uh, to integrate directly with Vault, or you can simply use things like the CLI or API to retrieve those secrets. And finally, this is more of a long-term play, right? Is is once you've got your your easy static credentials in there, migrating your CI/CD applications uh, to use Vault. Now let's start thinking about you know how do we refactor our applications directly to integrate with Vault. So I get that a, a total refactor, rewrite of an application is probably a long, um, long project, right? Maybe a year, several year project. Um, but what we can do is we can start using things like the Vault Agent or ENV Console or Console Template uh, to have those tools integrate with Vault and then the application only has to integrate with those tools or it doesn't have to integrate with them all. It doesn't even have to know it exists, right? So now your local application uh, can rely on something like console template to go out to vault and grab a secret and then automatically update a uh, configuration file you know with a new secret or env uh, console can go out grab a secret from vault and then it can drop uh, the environment variables you know in regards to the new credentials so things like that you can start immediately integrating applications with vault but as you work on a much larger project of refactoring those applications to take advantage of the, vault, the services that Vault's providing. All right, so once you start integrating those applications, right, and you start having those quick wins and, and things like that throughout the business, right, you wanna make sure that you're showing value to the business, right? And this is really the hero part of the conversation here. So you wanna make sure that the business understands what you're doing with Vault and how it's improving the organizational um, security posture uh, for your applications. All right, so the first thing you want to do, as I mentioned, is you know, talk to security, talk to you know, management, things like that, and address some of these um, organizational challenges that you may have had before. So things like rotating passwords we've touched on before. But you can also uh, offer up things like data encryption. Right? So instead of having to buy a secondary tool and managing that tool and you know, pay for the cost of that tool and all that kind of stuff, like, let Vault uh, encrypt those credentials or those those uh, clear, clear text data for you, and then you can store that on whatever back end that you want. And so, what that allows you to do is be less reliant on that you know that back end that re you know only does the the encryption that you require, and then you can have Vault encrypt that data, and you can place that wherever you want. Uh, Vault can do things like tokenization, so that may, may be valuable to like financial and retail um, organizations, uh, PKI certificates. Uh, secret consolidation is a big one that I generally see with a lot of customers is, you know, we've got one, one guy over here using one password. We've got somebody over here using LastPass. We've got somebody over here storing an Excel file, right? Have all those people within your organization uh, consolidate all their, t all their secrets within Vault. And that also allows you to uh, gain access to those credentials in case somebody goes on PTO or they're unavailable, they're in a meeting, things like that. They're readily available for uh, everyone that has access to Vault. And finally, the privilege access. Uh, you can use Vault to you know, limit privilege access for people. Um, you can have Vault you know, go out and create you know, certain policies in the cloud uh, as they're generating those dynamic credentials. So if somebody only needs access to read an S3 bucket, right, you give them the credentials and the policy attached to those credentials only allows them to read S3 credit, uh, the bucket, right? It doesn't allow you to spin up EC2 or, or things like that. 
So once you start addressing a lot of these um, challenges, right, the next thing you want to do, or really the last thing you want to do, is you want to definitely communicate this to the organization. So start meeting with stakeholders of the applications to show them the things that you can do and also show the things that you have done already to improve the security posture of their application and the organization as a whole. Uh, one thing I like to do is you know, market the benefits of Vault to the organization as a whole. Right? As you start building rapport with different developer teams, right, they're going to also become advocates for Vault and they're going to start telling all the other developers, right? So you, you may uh, have an influx of requests into Vault once you start successfully integrating applications with Vault. But you want to make sure you're marketing the benefits to Vault so everybody is aware that, hey, Vault is in the organization and it can do all these different things for your application, right? To make it easier for development teams or the organization as a whole to make sure that everything is secure. Uh, the last thing is, you know, make sure you demonstrate those integrations. So as you have quick wins within an organization or whether you have, um, you know, specific integrations that you want to show off uh, before they're actually implemented, right, don't be afraid to show those off. Um, even if you have, don't have like a development cluster or anything like that, you can easily run Vault locally on your laptop and configure those integrations, right? I do it all the time with customers or demonstrations and things like that. So yeah, communication to me is really the way that you're going to become more of the Vault hero, right? And showing the business like what you've done and what you can do with Vault. So quick recap here. Um, first, you want to operationalize Vault, right? Get it up and running quickly as fast as possible, right? Don't waste a lot of time with that. Engage a partner, engage uh, HashiCorp directly, use community resources. Uh, you want to integrate that with your applications quickly. So move those static secrets in, change them to dynamic, um, and then start thinking about the long-term effects of integrating applications into Vault. And then obviously once you get success, like, you know, show that value to the organization, right? So I hope this uh, quick presentation uh, gives you some ammo as you start to deploy Vault within your organization and try to, you know, gain a lot of value uh, and show the organization that, you know, Vault is going to be a very valuable tool for you. So right before I, uh, I jump off, I know this is only a 25 minute presentation and this is a very, very wide subject. Uh, so my good friend, Rob Barnes, uh, he was actually EMC at HashiComp Digital back um, in, I think, May or June, I forget. But him and I actually recorded a HashiCast um, about this specific uh, topic. And the idea was that I only had 25 minutes to kind of talk about some of these things at HashiComp Digital, and we want to be able to expand on a lot of that. So look for that coming soon after uh, HashiComp Digital uh, here. And the last thing I want to say is, um, you know, super proud of this. You know, I have a new book coming out uh, around Vault. So it's uh, running HashiCorp Vault in production. Uh, Dan McTeer and I are co-authors uh, on that. So Dan, if you're not sure Dan is, Dan was the one who wrote, run, ran and uh, deployed uh, Vault in Adobe, and uh, he now works for HashiCorp. So him and I kind of teamed up, wrote this book around how to deploy Vault and manage the Vault service uh, throughout like more of an enterprise um, organization. So uh, that's it for me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the presentation, and uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching. Hey, hey, hey.